Okay, yeah, this is about a UPC and Pilot, release three. Um, you might be thinking, was there a release two? Or you may not have ever even heard of it, but I hope to change that today. Uh, it's a really cool database we've been working on at the PDS Imaging Node, and Keith mentioned it, uh, they use it at the ODE, and we're hoping some more people uh, realize what it is and, and some of the cool stuff in this database. Um, I'm Mark Balin, and that's my email address. If you have any questions, uh, you can email me, or um, I think I have the link there, yeah, pilot.wr.usgs.gov. So if you bring that up, you can look at it right now and check it out. You've got your uh, computer uh, in front of you. Okay, first of all, I'll just tell you what it is for people that don't know. Uh, UPC stands for Unified Planetary Coordinated Database, and what it is, it's a database of the geospatial information on footprints, on images from various missions. And uh, I have a little uh, uh, graphic there uh, that I cut from Pilot. It's got the footprints drawn out there, and if you go to Pilot, you can check it out. But uh, what we do is um, we run the images that we grab from the PDS and we run them through a pipeline and a cluster uh, and take them through ISIS and generate all the uh, geospatial information we can get from the We use Spice to get the geometry and some of the keywords. Um, as you can see there, like um, emission angles, uh, you know, center latitude, resolution, phase angle, all this, all this stuff. And, um, make it so we can do searches on it. Um, the database is Postgres and PostGIS, which is open source, and you can set it up at home. Um, you can actually pull down this database and use it yourself and your own tools. It's pretty big. Um, but, um, and I can tell you what instruments are on it. Or if you go to Pilot, you can tell. Um, you can do searches on various instruments. Uh, the, the footprints are stored in WKT, which is one of the text. And if you have Postgres with the PostGIS uh, extensions, then um, and you set up just the, the software, you can, you can get access to these footprints. And, and that's what they look like if you don't know WKT. It'll, and it'll give you all the coordinates for walking around the footprint. And we have to limit it a little bit. When we first started writing this, we had like 200 points to like a thousand points and some of the geometry we generated, which is really great for doing searches. You know, if you want to find overlaps or if you got a feature, you just want to find one, you know, a little image from Venus or from Viking or from whatever and say, give me all the images of this little area. And it's great because you have such exact geometry. But for searches, it gets a little difficult. So what we had to do is uh, kind of narrow it down to 40 points, which kind of give, which which gives us really good geometry and good enough for doing fast searches too. Um, yeah, and so and then we could also have, as I said before, the geospatial keywords. Uh, in the database, you can search on those. And what we get, what we're doing now is, I'll tell you what's, uh, what, what the improvements are in a second for um, the third version of this database, which we're going to release in a couple months. And uh, uh, I, uh, I want to get uh, an email list or something for people to sign up who's interested in it, because we'd like more people to be able to use it and get this exact geometry. One of the nice things about this geometry is um, a lot of the sites, you're stuck with just the center points, which are the points from the labels, and they're not very exact. And so what we're using in, when we run, uh, when we create this database and run it through the cluster is, uh, we're using ISIS and the newest spice data to get as close as we can to where these things land on the planet. So for your scientists, they love this. You know, they can, they can really line up their features or, or their area of interest and they can nail uh, the data that they want to get to. Um, that's why it's kind of a cool database once you have some tools to search through it. And the other part of this is Pilot, uh, which is our web interface. And then that's also going through a major revision. Um, and it's very light, flexible, just using today's web tools, PHP and jQuery. Um, and Open Layers is the mapping interface. This, let's see if I get one of these little wiry pointers here. I can 
So this map here is open layers, and then the rest of this guy is written in, in just PHP and jQuery, and it's open source too. You can pull down this code, you can set up your own little maps on your site. You can do whatever you want with this. We're, we're, we want people to take this software and use it for their own their own fun and games and whatever they want to do with it. But this, we have a little library here just that helps open layers interact with planetary data. And it deals with the poll issues, it deals with um, some of the 360 line issues and 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 lets us um, bring up maps really quick. We also have a WMS behind there, which we're gonna move to a pretty fast server in Phoenix. So we want people to access that too. We have uh, maps for most of the major targets, and, and we we're putting uh, geologic maps in there and all kinds of stuff. So um, what we really want to do is give this thing away. We want people to use it and and and, and figure out what they can do with it. Um, but we will be releasing a new version with a schema, with these map tools, with the whole kit, which anybody can grab, and uh, you'll be able to do that from the pilot site. Okay, so what we're doing for version three, one of, one of our first issues was completeness. So we're over in our corner at the USGS and we're making this cool database, and I'm like, this thing rocks, look, we can show these uh, footprints exactly where they are, and uh, we can show all this geospatial data. So we run down the hall and we show it to the cartographers, and they do a search on it, and they're like, Oh, this is cool. Yeah, so I can, you know, somebody might be making a map of Themis. Let me check it out. They'll, they'll do a coverage map. They'll, they'll search out an area, and they'll, they'll be like, is the latest, you know, PDS release there? Is, is the non-release stuff there? What about, you know, some of them will want the error data and everything. And, uh, uh, you know, we'll be just like, um, yeah, okay, we need to figure that out. And so then I'd run back to my office, and they'd be like, who was that guy? But the, what we're doing in this release is we're trying to tackle that problem. We're, we're going through all the release data, and we're showing how, how many images aired out. Uh, how, we're, we're, we're setting up the releases of the UBC database, so they're going to be regular releases. So people will know, once PDS does a release of like new Themis data or new um, high rise data or new whatever, that it'll be a week later or even less, maybe we'll get it into UBC and the coordinates will be there and all the geospatial stuff will be there. And this is the new version, which I'm just working on here, but I'm, I'm using just smart lines and some other uh, jQuery tools, but it, it'll tell what's there, and then I'll, I'll be able to put these little lines and indicate, hey, these are aired out. And if something aired out, you'd be like, why did it air out? Why can't I see these footprints? Well, you could you can interrogate this tool, and you can say, oh, it was an ingest error. Maybe there was some corruption in the data when it came down. Or it's a spice error. There's no spice data for it. Maybe it was a calibration shot. Maybe uh, the, it was a, it was a near target or a business target or something like that. Um, or there might be, like for some Voyager stuff, there just isn't spice data. Even though something might be facing Neptune or facing some other target, they, the spice data may have been lost, and it's good to know this. So even if you don't have, even if it errors out, though, we will have this data at UBC and you'll be able to look at the footprints in the game and go through them with this new release. And the last error, I mean, there's other error types which are rare, but the footprint error type can happen if, let's, let's say it's like a real small uh, approach shot of a target and you only have two or three pixels to see. Well, there's no way we're going to gem generate geometry from that, so that can be another type of error you might get. some uh, other features that uh, we're adding to Pilot and, and should be coming out for the next release. Um, one thing we want to do is, is uh, with certain instruments um, like uh, uh, Themis and like Themis, there's different bands that people are really interested in and different filters and different wavelengths they want to search on. We're adding all that data into our database so people can query on, on, on these sort of things. I, I know there's people in our building where I walk over and say, yeah, we got the CNI ISS stuff in there, check it out. And they'd be like, cool. And now can I look at the BIM stuff, you know, with the same geometry? And so we'd have to run back to our office and, and get that stuff in. But we're, now, the next release, we're hoping to get high-rise observations so we have full footprints 
in there. Um, the VIGS data, and then we're going to start looking at some uh, radar images, uh, radar instruments too, like the John and Mini RF. Another thing we're shooting for is getting better units, better descriptions in there, so the database is cleaner and looks good. And we want to get a, a version of the schema online so people who use it can, can see exactly where their stuff is. Uh, we want to get uh, an RSS news email list going so people are informed right away when we do updates. And with the pilot tool itself, I need to come up with a better selection method for picking. So I have a paging method right now, which is kind of confusing for people. So I'm going to do a little tweaks to the interface to make that a little easier. But this is just an example of the of the current interface. I just went to Iowa and uh, I, I found this image. It looks like there's a little something coming out there. Maybe I just discovered a volcano. I think. But uh, that's just an example of, of some of the stuff you can pull up um, while you're using it and, and uh, the way it browses images. So there's a link at the bottom, and if you have questions, you can send it to my email address, or you can send it to the web team. And uh, we're going to set up an email list. So if you see me, um, and I'll put your name on a list, and we'll let you know about updates. And if you have any interest in using this database or think of any applications, let me know. And all the stuff is, is open source, and, and all the kits, all the maps. If you want to put maps on your website, I want you to grab it, just like uh, uh, Ross was saying at the beginning, I think that, I think it's a big deal just to get this stuff out there and see how people can collaborate and use these tools. And that's it for me. Any questions? Uh, hey Mark, I, I have a whole, I have a series of questions, but I'll, I'll, if anyone else wants to ask a question, please come up and interrupt me. So uh, I'm Ross Byer from uh, NASA Ames Research Center. Um, as far as the UPC goes, right, so you talked about how the data in the, in the UPC uh, is, uh, you use SPICE to take data from the PDS to, to create these footprints. I know that there are activities at the USGS where the cartographers assemble um, maps and improve the pointing, improve the SPICE information from what is released via SPICE and, and, and via the PDS. Are those improvements in the UPC? Um, I might need help with that question, but typically we just use the release SPICE for, for, piping, for going through this pipeline. Okay. Um, now there are people that use Pilot, and we can talk about this, um, and use the UPC for doing non-release data and where we where we use other um, inputs to create the footprints and right. we've done that with mercury messenger and some other things um, but the stuff that we're releasing the database we're releasing online is just a spice that's available to everybody right now okay. i believe so i mean the scott scott higgins and bob sikarski they helped create the uh, database back there they might have to help me I'm, I'm kind of the web, web geek at the front. But. Okay, so I'll, I'll try and uh, I'll, I'll ask them. I can they can come up to the mic if they have something to to add to that. So as far as access to the UPC goes, it's a static database that people have to download a dump of and build their own locally. Is there an API access to the database? Can we log into a USGS system and run queries on the database? Um, there there is a sort of you can query. You can query pilot it and get information on just single footprints. Otherwise, then otherwise you got to pull down the big database. We, do, we also have shape files you can pull down for specific targets in specific areas per instrument. And you know we may do that for smaller chunks of the database too. But right now it is one big database uh, to pull down. And what we want to do is set up a regular release schedule, and we have more interest. It'd be nice to set up a service. Like right, but 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 you, you mean a regular release schedule? You mean regular release new dumps of the data? And then everyone that wants to use it has to download their own set. They have to download the dump, and then they have to be knowledgeable enough to set up a Postgres database to run queries on. Whereas if you just had a more complete inter or a query interface, then that might be easier because then you can just update your database, and everyone can benefit that rather than doing a lot of kind of heavy right. lifting back and forth. Right, and, and uh, we have the beginnings of a service. So if you want to go against individual footprints and grab information with a product idea, with an ISIS idea, or something like that, you can get all this metadata that we're generating from the UPC from our website. Um, right, but but only single a single footprint yeah. time. If I wanted to do a, a complicated query on Postgres parameters, yeah. there's no way for me to do that under the current system. Correct. Okay. Not. But I will go set it up this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be done.
Because we are, pilot talks back and forth, right, right. the same thing. Yeah. So really, all I would have to do is tell you what parameters to set it, and you could Sure, right, you, you could do that. I mean, you have to be careful about that, too, so you don't have injection attacks and that kind of right. thing. Um, and then my final question is, how does, how does pilot and, and UPC fit in with the stuff that, that Keith was talking before about the geosciences. Now, this seems, you know, kind of superficially very similar, right? There's data, there's maps. Yeah. Are, are those, are they linked somewhere at the back end? Are they completely different things? Are, are they different tools for different approaches? What, what does the, what does the, the naive planetary scientist who's looking for data do, right? Where do they go first or second? And for what what purpose? Yeah, I think I think Keith can speak more to that. Okay. Well, yeah, I can't no way to answer that. Do everything that the ODE does, I, and I think what we're trying to do is give people like the ODE tools. So yeah. That UBC, right. So they, can, they can improve their stuff. Um, we actually link to the pilot system. Okay. Uh, we actually link ODE. You know links to the pilot system. We actually pull some of the footprints for some of the older data sets directly from the pilot system. So uh, we get a data dump from them for their data. And so we have links to the pilot system. ODE is considered a, a broad general interface where we use the various sources of data out there to find what we need. So in the case of pilot, because pilot doesn't support every data set. So pilot supports some specific data sets with really good footprints. So we use those, we provide the links. So they, they, they feed off of each other, they support each other, but they don't really compete with each other. Does that answer your question, Ross? Okay. Uh, one more comment from the chair here. Um, Mark, will you be around all week in case people want to see demos or discuss this more with you? Yeah, I'll be around. And uh, also, uh, Scott is back there in the back, and Boss back there in the back, and uh, we're all really familiar with the tool. And if anybody wants to get a hold of stuff, get our, know how to get to the database, get on our email list, um, and uh, get the code for Pilot or, or be able to display those maps on the page, just talk to me and, and I can help you do that. All right, thanks. So that was a good discussion. Uh,